day 10 of the Irish coast cycle and despite that thumbs up I'm really suffering uh, not so much physically uh, but mentally uh, this is 4 30 in the morning uh, I've woken up with a really bad case of anxiety uh, it, it's partially about fears that are semi-real you know I'm, I'm a long way from anything what happens if I break down how would I get out uh, what if I've got COVID it's the end of the pandemic and I think I, maybe I was at something the previous couple of days I was worried about you know how would I look after myself a whole set of uh, fears um, now I'm not a stranger to anxiety, night anxiety in particular, uh, and I ha was at this stage doing sea swimming, uh, and I'd found it was a really great way of doing a reset, so I decided, okay, I'm going to get up and I'm going to go swimming, even though it's 4.30 in the morning and pretty cold at this stage. Uh, and that worked, it completely calmed my mind down, uh, and I was able to then uh, come back and rationally plan what I wanted to do with the day. Uh, I think the trigger for it was physical exhaustion from the previous day. Uh, I had covered an absolutely enormous distance with a lot of unexpected hills right at the end of it uh, and I think that just left me in this mental state where I wasn't quite prepared. And it's interesting, I've had much milder versions of something similar since um, and again I associated with physical exhaustion but a lot of people with cycle touring they think of the physical challenges uh, of it uh, which are real enough but there is also these mental challenges and I've seen many people re referencing having something similar happening to them and, and that sense of, 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 of being isolation, anxiety, uh, worry, you know, semi-real, semi-not real. So I thought it would be useful to sort of relate the time that happened to me. Oh, oh that's what I needed. Oh, that's what I needed. <laughs> so basically this morning of day 10 finds me right at the bottom of the Ivor Peninsula at the bottom of a steep ascent and it's a long way even to breakfast I think it was going to be about 25 kilometers before I found any place that was open. You can see the anxiety in my face in this early swim photo but also the way it's cleared by the time I came out uh, and I then spent a, a little time maybe about an hour walking around Derry, Derry Nan having a look at the different parts of it. Again this is 5, 5.30 in the morning and then I packed up and left. If you're there a bit later uh, Derry Nan House opens up uh, which has a very intriguing museum for Daniel O'Connell. It's basically very old school uh, but there are toilets and a cafe there as well. Uh, as you cycle out on the route uh, on the right hand side though is also a standing stone uh, which has got some ohm on it so that may also be worth the stop for you was on the road too early for any of the potential breakfast places to be opening but one point you might want to stop at is Stike Stone Fort. Uh, this very impressive structure once you're inside it is probably uh, 11th, 7th to 11th century the medieval period in Ireland. That it wasn't dismantled for construction materials is probably due to associations with what we call the gentry. There was a coffee shop open at Sneem, so I stopped for a very welcome coffee and chocolate eclair before hitting the beautiful roads that lead on the way up to Kenmare. And this was also the point where I had the genius idea of why not use the GoPro that I actually was carrying just to record myself swimming uh, to record myself cycling. And I really wish I had thought about this 10 days earlier in the Irish Coast Cycle so we'd have lots more road footage for me to show you. But this is where I first thought of it. Uh, setting out on the on one of the back roads around Kenmer. Uh, I mean this route as you can see is kind of very beautiful. There's a very busy main road which is unpleasant for the bits you have to cycle on this route. Again it's one of the problems with the peninsulas that sometimes the only road uh, that's available is, is the main road and that's going to have a lot of traffic. Uh, but there's quite a few spots where you can get off the main road for maybe 10 kilometers along parallel roads. Uh, at much slower of course but really worthwhile and from the grass in the middle here you get an idea of how few cars uh, this road would normally see. From this point on it's going to be common for me to have road footage and I think it greatly improves the experience of these videos. 
The other thing I'd done while having my melt out in the middle of the night is gone onto booking.com and booked myself a hotel uh, for the following night when I got to Kenmare. I figured a good night's sleep uh, and a chance to eat in a town would probably sort my head out. Uh, the only challenge was finding a good place to park the bike overnight, um, but uh, I got all that set up and then I went on a little trip to one of Kenmare's little treats, which is about a five minute walk from the center of the town, it is quite a large stone circle and um, it's a bit overdeveloped there's a booth where they charge you a couple of euro in and I'm not a fan of the big lay land he's planted around it because often the whole point of a stone circle is the view from the stone circle but if you're in Kenmare it's definitely worth the visit uh, this one gets a lot more people than the previous ones and there's various offerings and um, uh, strange leprechauns left this is particularly entertaining for me and a tree with lots of notes on it which is fairly traditional of course uh, it's also worth walking down to the harbour in Kenmare which has a fine view uh, down the estuary and that was day 10 the first really tough day of the Irish coast cycle if you're enjoying the videos give the channel a follow there's plenty more to come and please do give me a thumbs up for this one so the distribution goes out there